So we talked about what actually leads to evolution. Now, it, we talked about separation as the key. But remember, you're only going to have the whole divergent evolution thing takes place, and you're going to get that spatial uh, distribution pattern and adaptive radiation if different things happen to the different populations which are isolated from each other. If everything that happens in one population happens to the other, in other words, if they're exposed to the same environment and exactly the same mutations happen in, the, in, in both populations, then you're not going to see too much difference occur between them. But that's not typically what happens in life. What ends up happening in life is three things. First, when those populations get isolated, either actually physically isolated or they explore different niches within the same ecosystem or they have different genes which prevent them from having sex with each other or when they have you know, any other kind of isolation that we talked about, whatever speciation method we're talking about, when they actually become isolated, then what's going to happen is that since the populations are not interchanging genes, since the gene flow is going to stop, then other things can actually cause evolution to take place. For example, you know, mutations. If a mutation happens in one group but not the other, that group can actually change compared to the other group. Also, if selection is different, if the environment is different, if the pressure is different, that will also lead to differentiations. And finally, if genetic drift takes place in one group but not the other. In other words, if random events happen in one group but not the other, that is ends up going to cause differentiation between them. So remember, the things we talked about in the microevolutionary lecture series uh, about the, how evolution actually takes place, that is how macroevolution actually happens. See, microevolution is the change within a population. But if a population is changing here and another population there, which got separated from that population, it used to be the same, but that one doesn't change while this one changes, all of a sudden you have two different populations. Now, if there's enough changes accumulated over a very long period of time, these populations will be too, so different, they will not be able to reproduce with each other anymore, and then you have two different species. So that's how it works. That's how microevolution becomes macroevolution. Microevolution is changes within a population. So it's like human beings becoming different kinds of human beings. You didn't, you're still human beings. You're just changing a little bit, you know. Maybe a, a flow from uh, smaller people to taller people. That's, but it's still people. But remember, if you have two separate groups of people who never interchange genes with each other, and in completely different places, and now one group changes while the other one does not, and if there's enough change between these two groups, that could lead them to become completely separate from each other. And if you don't believe that's possible, review the extra videos where I talk about the evidence for macroevolution, where we actually discuss many different examples of laboratory experiments where we actually prove that with isolation and enough differentiation between two isolated populations, this actually happens. What ends up happening is two different populations will evolve, and they're so different from each other that even afterwards, if you actually allow them to cross with each other, they will choose not to cross with each other or actually will be incapable of crossing with each other. So you end up getting that reinforcement of those two different species. And then sometimes they will actually will cross with each other, but it will form a new species in between them, which is called the hybrid. Or sometimes the hybrid will be even better than either of the parent species, so you call it fusion. And we talked about that in a previous video. Now, that is how you actually get macroevolution. Remember, long periods of time accumulating differences in two isolated populations. And how do you get those differences in the first place? Differential selection, now mutations which happen in one but not the other, and unique random events such as genetic drift that occur in one population but not the other. All right? On the next video, we're going to talk about how genes actually change and that leads to evolution. I'll see you guys then.